Hello, I say exchange. What number do I have to ask for to get hopped over 095? Well, 9 of Pfeiffer, if you want it. I don't mind at all. Hello, yes, yes. Is that Hicks, Hicks, Hicks and... Uh, I, I beg your pardon, that was a Hick too many. Yes. Is that my solicitors? Yes. Leslie Weston speaking. Yes, would you ask my creditors to come round at once, please? Yes, I can give them all something at last. Mm. Yes, the doctor says I've got measles. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> and what a doctor, too. Do you know, I met him the other morning and he was looking so fed up. I said, what's the matter, old chap? He said, nothing very much. He said, only I've been treating a fellow down at the corner of the road for jaundice. And I just found out he's a Chinaman. <laughs> yes, it is really funny what one sees in these days. Do you know, there was a boxer went into one of our London hotels the other day. And he put his umbrella in the rack and put a note on it. This belongs to a heavyweight boxer back in ten minutes. He came back later, found the umbrella gone with another note there, taken by a long-distance runner, not coming back at all. <laughs> yes, and, and they're advertising some marvellous things in the paper in these days, too. I was reading one here today. It's in modern furnished flat to let just off Piccadilly, consisting of scullery, use of landing window, coat hook and 48 stairs. This is rather funny, too. It says, lost in taxi, tram or motor bus. One packet containing 75 pound notes of sentimental value only. <laughs> P.S. Don't trouble, I found them in the tea caddy. This is rather good too, it is wireless. 12 midnight, television, Parisian postcards, transmitted by the bear process. Here's rather a good one too. This is a house full of furniture to be sold at once. Owner growing abroad, there's only one instalment paid and the furniture shop getting annoyed. Yes, but do you know for real, Hume, you can't beat the East End kiddies. I was coming through the East End of London the other day, passing one of the new barber's shops. A chap in the window was having his hair singed. A little tiny kitty came along, had a look in the window, called his pal. He said, I hope, come here. He's a bloke here looking for him with a light. <laughs> ah, well, we can't mess, about, uh, can't mess about up here all the time, so I think, Dennis, now we'll have a little song. Would you mind playing The Freedom of the City for me? That's splendid, right. Now, there's lots of honours given to all sorts of people now, but the way they choose them doesn't seem quite fair. The freedom of the city is the one that's given most, but some folks never seem to get their share. Now, when they give the freedom of the city, what about the butcher by the by? With his little apron, he's the friend of every flirt. When men walk into his shop, they're always on a cert. Cause even old and ugly ones can get a bit of skirt, so he ought to have the freedom of the city. Then there's Mr. Epstein with his statues in the park, and although no one could ever call them pretty, he's the only man who's yet made Venus look like Winston Churchill, and he ought to have the freedom of the city. Now, when they give the freedom of the city, there's Gordon Richards ought to have it too. He's only four feet high, and if he never seems to care, and lots of henpecked married men who I know all declare, say they'd like to know what he knows about handling a mare, and they all would have the freedom of the city. Now, when they give the freedom of the city, what about the tramp upon the road? In the workhouse Christmas time, you never find him rough, when they gave him far too large a piece of Christmas duff, for telling them politely that he had really had enough, or he ought to have the freedom of the city. Then there is the barmaid, who for seven days a week must always show her sympathy and pity to all the married men who say their wives don't understand them or she ought to have the freedom of the city. Now, when they give the freedom of the city, what about our old friend, Mr. Drage? Of lovers loving in the spring, the poets always tell, but Mr. Drage is practical, he has the goods to sell, because he provides them with the spring and feather bed as well, so he ought to have the freedom of the city. The British working man, he brings up 14 healthy kids in two small rooms and never asks for pity. Now for doing all this mass production in so small a space, why, he ought to have the freedom of the city.